Hey everybody, it's Alex Miller at Capneon here. The main thrust of my video today is to introduce you to the name Retrieval Aided Generation. I've actually talked about this before. You might recall a few weeks ago, it was widely discussed on LinkedIn that Morgan Stanley had had a successful project that was designed to give advisors better access to their knowledge base. And I made a video at the time saying, hey, I like this. I think they're doing it the right way. What they're doing now has a name, and that name is Retrieval Aid Generation. I'll talk in a second more about exactly what it is. I would point out, I think something getting a name is interesting. It's an interesting harbinger. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. But that roses have poems about their name is maybe a, a real fact that tells you something about the world. So this retrieval-aided generation, I think a lot of people out there are starting to, to wake up to it, to tinker with it, to see it as something that can be done and is worth doing, and also provides an opportunity to showcase exciting new technology. The appearance of a name is sort of a harbinger that best practices are emerging, and I've tinkered with these things myself, and they, I endorse there's really something here. And then for some problems that a lot of corporations have in particular, big corporations. So let me define retrieval aid and generation first. There's a lot of conversation out there that we like to use a large language model like an expert. And this is, you know, it, it works well enough, there's a little bit of you know, you could tantalize, like maybe it could work, but it doesn't work well enough because of this hallucination problem. So sometimes LLM will just make stuff up at inappropriate times. So there's a risk management problem attached to doing this. Retrieval under aided generation is, I think, easiest to describe by setting it up in contrast to this. So rather than have the LLM directly know things, we're gonna combine the LLM with another tool that's gonna dig up documents from a source we have. And then the user is gonna query, and then the LLM is gonna handle that query and do a search. And then it's essentially gonna read these documents and describe what it finds in them for the users. So the LLM is no longer the expert, which I think was a perilous place to be putting it. It's sort of the reference librarian that's and it's doing an extra step of actually telling you what's in the thing. So let me spotlight uh, like a variety of reasons this is good, corporate and just kind of AI-centric problems that it gives you a handle on. You know, honestly, I think it feels like every corporation in the world, you know, you want to not just be about tribal knowledge that you can't you don't know like who knows where the bodies are buried and it's like, like somebody leaves, you freak out. So you're always trying to write things down. You end up with a lot of stuff written down and you end up with this kind of rambling monster of a SharePoint site and you can have this sort of uh, success failure where, well, everything's documented, but it's just too much and nobody reads it and we forgot about it. And I've seen in my life lots of you know, it's a new season, let's try to clean up that knowledge base and make it useful to people. Retrieval aided generation is a great fit for this. And this is also on one of my themes about maybe AI actually helps you with what you could call a data quality issue. And so an argument on like, don't use AI, you're not ready because your SharePoint site is mess. Well, AI is also something that's gonna help you get your SharePoint site under control. So there's this problem. We have all this knowledge about what we're doing documented, but then it's really too much to know and that's where to find anything. And this retrieval aided generation, which is maybe a, a combination of AI technologies put to a particular purpose is a great way to solve this. And if you did a really good job, it's not hard to imagine why it would be really powerful and that maybe you have a new employee who has lots of questions about how things get done around here, what are our practices, Saying, oh, just go to the SharePoint site with these 10,000 Word files, you don't know what's what, that's, that's not going to work. Potentially being able to query an LLM-like interface and just ask questions and get answers, hopefully correct answers, that's potentially really 
really, really powerful. Uh, and you can, let's make up big numbers. I think a lot of people, especially in IT uh, lately, you start a new job and it's really several months before you're really making a contribution in part just because you're learning where the bathroom is and things like this, so to speak. If you have all of your new employees wasting several months and you can just stop that from happening, that's really an astronomical amount of money for a Fortune 500 corporation. Moving on, well, what are the AI problems that this helps you solve? So I already talked about the hallucinations. You use an LLM directly as an expert. It's going to make stuff up. It, maybe you can control it with prompting. Maybe you can't. That's number one, because now it's just essentially reading other documents back to you. You have a lot more control of this problem. You have a lot more of a sense of what's going to come out of this thing and more confident that it's going to consistently be the right thing. A second thing, and this is a little bit of a straw man, I admit, there's a lot of discourse on LinkedIn that's relatively vague about we want our own LLM and we're going to do something to get our own LLM. And I think, I hope uh, people out there are know there's a number of different ways to do this and some are harder than others. So another road you could take is you could build or refine your own LLM on your data. Let's imagine it's this SharePoint site full of your corporate practices and then have it be that expert in that way I've been sort of reacting against. I think this is probably just way harder than retrieval aided generation on average. So it's not that there's nothing there that can work and it's not that there's nothing interesting about it, but potentially you're just taking a much heavier lift approach to being in the same way. And I would add, and I talked about this in my video about Morgan Stanley, provenance is really important to true correct knowledge. And if you're doing this retrieval aided generation, you could have every response say in it, hey, this, this content is based on, I found XYZ document, and if you're worried about it, go read it. The all LLM, knowledgeable LLM approach doesn't give you this option. So I'm really excited about this retrieval-aided generation. If I convince you of anything here, I'd love to talk with you more about it. To just hit on some other things, I've been talking about other things I'm going to hit this week. Some of you out there, are you're, talking, you're doing an AI program. Everybody talks about their AI program. I really am begging you to make this specific. And I think also realistically, some people are under the gun out there to do something cool and useful with AI, probably not getting as much guardrail and specificity about what it should be. And this is something achievable that I think solves a problem that every sufficiently large corporation in the universe has. There's a couple other technologies that come up a lot in this conversation, notably vector embeddings and vector databases. I'm going to make a video about those and kind of where they fit into this picture. And then also, I think we're probably at a crossroads in the management of the average mega corporation in that this kind of, oh, our SharePoint site is too big and nobody can find anything problem is to some degree an indication of, well, let's be real. At a large organization, the overhead of the right hand trying to keep track of what the left hand is doing grows and grows. And then people talk about agility, but this is really one reason why small companies exist and large companies don't devour everything is that not everything about being a large company is good. And one disadvantage is just keeping track of all the information that has to fit together from across the corporation. AI can help with this a lot. I, I saw this term from a fellow named Matthew Gladden, who will give more thorough credit in a future video, but there's this funny term, a rhizocorp, which is the idea that, well, maybe AI will allow you to have a really sprawling, decentralized conglomerate in a way uh, you couldn't before. Hey, I hope you like that teaser. I got too much to say this week. So if you're interested in these videos, smash the buttons or something. We've got a lot more great content coming out in the next few days.